What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we got a reaction to an alternative rock and pop gems. This is actually part two of a fantastic list that our patron and longtime supporter, and Cat Dub, has brought to us. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out the Patreon. We've loaded a patron link on the end screen. We appreciate every single patron. We couldn't do this without you. I super enjoyed this list. I'm going to link it below part one, uh, and we're on to part two. There's really no background on it, so let's jump right into it. And if you've never been with us before, just a reminder, the music will not be in the video, but it will be at a Vimeo link below. Our first selection, if they're not necessarily ranked in order, but I mean, it is a top 10. We got Furry Eyes from the Creatures off the Boomerang album in 1989. And Cat Dub says the Creatures were an English band formed in 1981 by vocalist Susie Sue and drummer Budgie of the influential goth punk new wave group Susie and the Banshees. A kind of side project, the Creatures were essentially a more exotic, experimental, and percussion-oriented version of Susie and the Banshees. Their songs were inspired by a broader range of musical styles than that of the Banshees. Susie's lyrics to Furry Eyes were still of an occult nature though. Some things would never change. I found this was inspired by the 1988 novel In the Eyes of Mr. Fury by Philip Ridley. This went to number 12 on the Billboard Modern Rocks chart in America. I'm gonna have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, and Cat Dub. Fury Eyes. The Creatures, definitely Budgie is a star on this. The percussion was fantastic. A little Far Eastern influence on there. The uh, the lyrics were pretty good as well. Talking about exercising the ghost when you're dancing with the other one who doesn't know. Um, you know, they, they don't know that uh, you're in love with them and then you're there. And So yeah, just some, some little, uh, you know, just some mystical lyricism there. But uh, really cool soundscape on that one. And next up, we have Memory Bay by Bill Nelson from the album After the Satellite Sings in 1996. Bill's an English singer, guitarist, songwriter, producer, painter, video artist, writer, and experimental musician. He rose to prominence as the chief songwriter, vocalist, and guitarist of the rock group Bebop Deluxe, which he formed all the way back in 1972. He's been described as one of the most underrated guitarists of the 70s art rock movement. In 2015, he was recognized with the Visionary Award at the Progressive Music Awards. And Cat Dub says, one of the guitar gods of rock, Nelson's solo career, has been very adventurous, but unfortunately, he never got serious radio play back in the day. I've never even heard of him. A musician's musician with a sense of fun and childhood innocence, similar to Brian Eno in that respect. Both his vocals and guitar style are distinctive, and he always records with the best people. There you have it, Memory Babe, Bill Nelson. Just fantastic, man. The instrumentation on that, the arrangement, the changes up in it as it, as it progressed. Man, I thought that was just super good. I, I actually liked Bill's vocals. Um, the lyrics aren't all that important. It's more about the soundscape for me on this one. The great build, just all of it, man. Great guitar work, just everything worked on that one. A fun one. All right, we're going to go off Spotify for the next song because it's not available there. The Sun Does Rise, Jaw Wobbles, Invaders of the Heart. This features the great Dolores O'Riordan from, of course, the Cranberries on vocals from the album Take Me to God in 1994. Jaw Wobble, real name John Wardle, first became known as the original bass player in Public Image Limited in the late 70s and early 80s. That band was fronted by John Wyden, Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols. Both Ja Wobble and Wyden were interested in dub music, and Ja Wobble has continued to produce dub compositions for his solo albums. A uh, little information, that was from Ann Cat, little information on Ja Wobble has collaborated with many musicians, Brian Eno among them, and his explorations into the world music predated much of the genre's popularity. His 1994 album, This One, Take Me to God, was influenced by world genres and contributions from a variety of artists of diverse cultural backgrounds. His music has spanned a number of genres, including ambient music and dance music, and in 2003, reworkings of traditional English folk songs. So let's check it out. Jaw Wobble, Dolores O'Riordan on vocals. Just so, golly, man, she was just so, so good. Just lends this, this beautiful voice to this song, man, and really did a little bit of dub stuff in there and just just enjoyed that song the soundscape man it's, it's just a great great atmosphere at the sun does rise in the eastern sky and love soon comes over comes watch over i the road was long yes we traveled far thought long dark nights without guiding star visions of an angel came along the way told us don't be fearful for there comes a brighter day and just yeah just the atmosphere of this song is just uh it's just fantastic man you know the the album's called Take Me to God, so uh, it kind of has that, obviously, in the lyrical content. All right, next up, Traces of You. I'm going to try this. Anashka Shankar 
featuring Nora Jones on vocals from the Traces of You album in 2013. And Cat Depp says the daughters of sitar legend Ravi Shankar combined forces on this track. And Shaska Shankar essentially followed in her father's footsteps and became a virtual sitar player. She has had seven Grammy Award nominations, was the first musician of Indian origin to perform live and to serve as a presenter at the ceremony. She performs across multiple genres and styles, classical and contemporary, acoustic and electronic. Her half-sister, of course, Nora Jones, is an American Grammy-winning singer, songwriter, and pianist. And we have a decent amount of Nora Jones up on the channel. All right, I got it right. Anushka Shankar featuring her sister, Nora Jones. Traces of You, almost a hypnotic song, right? The instrumentation was fantastic. Not a lot of lyrics on here. They just repeat, traces of you linger like a teardrop fresh upon the air. My heart sings for you. Blame me like a rain cloud song, sounds upon the air, traces of you like a, a teardrop fresh upon the air for you play my ring. And it just kind of, uh, it just kind of keeps repeating those lines, but very well, obviously vocally with, uh, with, with Nora, very well done. Um, but yeah, the instrumentation is kind of the star here. Uh, I think she does a great job on that. And like I said, almost hypnotic in a great way. That's almost hypnotic is not always good, but in this case, it is good. Next up, we have Blue is the Ocean. We have the Cactus Blossoms from the Easy Way album in 2019. The Cactus Blossoms is an American indie rock band based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The band is composed of brothers Jack Torrey, a.k.a. Mr. Cactus, guitar, bass, vocals, and Paige Burkham, a.k.a. Mr. Blossom, guitar, vocals, with a touring act, including their older brother Tyler Burkham on guitar, their cousin Philip Hicks on bass, Jake Hansen on guitar, and Jeremy Hansen on drum. So the band's musical styling of, this, of the sounds and approaches of early country and rock and roll is inspired by traditional American folk music and hillbilly music and is reminiscent of 60s Nashville and Los Angeles. As heard in artists like Roy Orbison, The Birds, and Dwayne Eddy, which that was a Wikipedia summary, and Cat Dub says what Wikipedia fails to mention is that their vocal styles are a remarkable recreation of the Everly Brothers harmony sound. That's a lot of influences poured into one artist. Blue is the ocean, the cactus blossoms. Definitely wouldn't convince me this was uh, brought out in 2019. It definitely sounds like the 50s and, and very early 60s. You know, the delivery is very slow. The song is drawn out because that was kind of the style. Also, oddly enough, pretty hypnotic, right? Just kind of like the last tune kind of draws you in. You're kind of waiting on every line. Not a lot to the lyrics. Just, you know, it is almost late 50s, like lyricism as well, too. You know, I miss her and I need her back and I need her here with me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that was that was super interesting, like I said, to be a contemporary group with that sound. All right, we're halfway through the list. We got When Harpo Played His Harp from Jonathan Richmond from Modern Lovers in Modern Lovers 88 from 1988. Jonathan Richmond is an American singer, songwriter, and guitarist. In 1970, he founded the Modern Lovers, an influential proto-punk band. Since the mid-70s, Richmond has worked either solo or with a low-key acoustic and electric backing. He now plays only acoustic guitar to protect his hearing. He is known for his wide-eyed, unaffected, and childlike outlook in music that, while rooted in rock and roll, is influenced by music from around the world. And Cat Dub says, This song is an homage to the iconic comedian Harpo Marx. Anyone who's watched the classic Marx Brothers comedies knows there's often a musical interlude at some points in these films in which Chico plays piano and Harpo naturally performs on the harp. When Harpo played his harp, Jonathan Richmond... The things I noticed on this, I mean, this song is just about when Harpo played his harp, right? And how he drew everybody in and the memories of that. But the harmonizing was fantastic on here. Uh, the instrumentation, very nice. Uh, I thought Jonathan sounded sounded great, man. So it just, uh, just kind of draws you in with a almost a comforting sound to this song. So uh, enjoy that. Next up, we have the Pipettes with their song, Judy. They were a British indie pop girl group formed in Brighton, England in 2003 during their brief heyday. They were fronted by three female vocalists, Gwyno Saunders, Rebecca Stevens, and Rose Eleanor DeGaul, who I have a fantastic top 10 up that Anne Cat uh, brought uh, about six, seven months ago that she's just great, and backed by an all-male instrumental group known as the Cassettes. DeGaul was still in high school when the group was originally formed. They were conceived as an updated version of Phil Spector's girls' groups of the 60s. The original version of the group recorded a number of singles, but only one album, We Are the Pipettes, which of course this is off of, released in 2006, which is one is sung by Rose. It went to 46 in the UK. Judy, the Pipettes, 
Uh, awesome, awesome harmonizing on there. I mean, it has that sound. You know, they're going for the 60s girl sound. It has that. And it sounds great, man. I mean, bold thing to do. In the 2000s, uh, I knew a girl when her name was Judy. She used to do things I thought were rude, but I never said anything to her face because my friends all said she'd kick my arse all over the place. Used to think she was kind of cool. Saw her walking around the school, but all the boys would stop and turn their heads. Oh, but all the girls wish she was dead. So it drew me in right away. And then eventually... She becomes friends with Judy, right? She sees kind of through the tough facade and we're the best of pals and and uh, who's going to look out after you when, when you get older and no one wants to know you. I will, you know, that that sort of thing. So uh, it's 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 just a cool progression of the song. But Rose Eleanor de Gaulle sounds great. And, and so do the other girls coming in on the harmonizing. So I really enjoyed that. Next up, we have the wedding present with their song Jet Girl. Uh, the Wedding Present are an English indie rock group originally formed in 1985 in Leeds, England from the ashes of the Lost Pandas. The band's music has evolved from fast-paced indie rock in the vein of their most obvious influences to Fall, Buzzcocks, and Gang of Four to more varied forms. Throughout their career, they were led by vocalist and guitarist David Gedge, the band's only constant member. Closely linked to the C86 scene, guitar-based music genre characterized by jangle guitars and melodic power pop song structures. I've never heard that term, but... Uh, I like those things. The band has charted a total of 18 singles in the top 40 of the UK singles chart, including a historic run of 12 singles, one for each month in the year of 1992, which tied Elvis Presley's record for the most top 40 singles, hit singles in a year. I have never even heard of these guys. Let's go. All right, Jet Girl. From the Saturnalia album in 1996, The Wedding Present. Thought that was really good, man. Enjoyed the bass work on the guitar work. Uh, the vocals, uh, I really like the atmosphere of this song. A group I'd never heard of, even with that kind of success in the UK. I say it all the time, but it's weird, you know, here in the States, these groups will be, you know, very, very successful. And I've never heard of them. And I think this one's just kind of, he should have known better, right? She's a jet girl. She's not going to stick around. Oh, I could call you now, but I know you won't answer because some someone told me how it always ends. I guess that you could say, I took a great chance and now you've flown away. Are we still friends? You took off like a jet girl. Somehow I knew that it would happen all along. Oh, but I can bet, girl, wherever you are, you won't be landing there for long. So this girl, she moves from one thing to another. She's not going to be committed. And, you know, you find this often in songs. You know, the cliche of society is that the, the women get attached and the men fly away. But a lot of songs you listen to, it's the opposite. Once a guy gets attached, he's attached, man, and he can't let go after she says it's over. So it's another example of one of those songs, but a really good choice here. We got two left. We got the Style Council. So we're gonna go with their song, My Ever Changing Moods from the Cafe Blue debut album of theirs in 1994. And Kent Dub says, when singer songwriter and guitarist Paul Weller finally put the massively popular punk rock band, The Jam, to rest. Now I'll just stop for a second. We got several stuff up of The Jam. I love Weller, love The Jam. He did the obvious thing, <laughs> created a retro soul and funk band with a political edge called the Style Council. The core band consisted of Weller and keyboardist Mick Talbot, previously a member of Dexy's Midnight Runners, The Bureau, and the Merton Arcus. A number of the Style Council singles were sizable hits in the UK, were mostly ignored in the US, although they did get play in dance clubs. This was composed by Weller. Interesting, talking about the success that they had. This song went to 29 in the US. It remains Weller's greatest success in the US, right? Higher than any solo or any jam stuff, which is kind of crazy. My ever-changing moods, the Style Council, we went with the extended version there, as you saw. Just, you know, the star of this, I mean, it's interesting, you know, the the, the lyrics aren't bad. I mean, it it kind of caught, talks about, progresses just through the different verses, right? The cool before the warm, the calm after the storm, and then the hush before the silence, the winds after the blast, the love after the hate, the love we leave too late, you know, and just kind of, progresses through that but uh I, I thought weller's vocal delivery is really good but just the whole arrangement of it right the horns the drumming it's just this little cool journey that they take us on so that's what stands out on that song for me and definitely a different sound than the jam which is really what you should do i think sometimes when you pivot from a highly successful at least everywhere but the united states band you really don't want to try to go recreate that again because you're always going to be compared and it's hard to to uh, match whatever your original creation was. So turn and go the other direction. So I thought that was cool. And I'm like, well, there's a, a fantastic musician. The last selection, remember these aren't an order of top 10, right? It's just a top 10. So this isn't number one or anything. You On My Mind by Swing Out, Sister Kaleidoscope World, 1989, their second album. 
and Cat Dubs, the Swing Out Sister were initially an electronic pop trio, but then quickly shrank to a duo consisting of vocalist Kareen Drury and keyboardist Andy Connell. Later albums and singles became less dependent on synthesizers and instead featured more involved orchestral arrangements with strings and horns. They even invited American songwriter arranger Jimmy Webb to arrange two tracks on their second album. Swing Out Sister is often billed as jazz pop group, but I've never really known jazz aficionados to pay much attention to them. Fans always seem to be mainly rock and adult contemporary listeners. Their musical influences include Burt Bacharach, who we just lost a couple weeks ago at the time of this filming, Stevie Wonder, the Jackson 5, Curtis Mayfield, Minnie Ripperton, Rotary Connection, and The Fifth Dimension. The latter influence would help explain their interest in seeking out Jimmy Webb. I found this was their lead single. You On My Mind, Swing Out Sister. Great production on this song, right? Just, just fantastic production, horns, arrangement, all of it. I thought she sounded fantastic. I mean, the song itself is, you know, it, it sounds, it's kind of an upbeat song, but the lyricism is not, not upbeat at all. You On My Mind, she's basically just singing to this guy that, you know, he, he, she misses him and without him, she's really nothing. Her friends keep telling her she's going to get over him, but she never does. And then later on it unfolds. It's been years since you've been gone, but she's still just hoping for that one more chance, although she figures she's not going to get it. So a really good choice there. Now we're going to get into my favorites. I always talk about this, right? Because Ann Cat Dub obviously knows all these artists and just does such a great job in compiling their list uh, all the time, right? Of trying to curate all these artists. So I'm just judging this off one song, right? So it's a little bit difficult. So I'm picking the artist, not the song. But, it, you know, it, it, these might not be my favorites if I listen to entire catalogs and stuff. But uh, so with that said, my faves are going to be Honorable Mentions, Anushka Shankar. I mean, we listened to Traces of You there with Nora Jones, but really liked her. Liked the Pipettes. You know, we listened to Judy, Rose, Eleanor DeGaulle. I, I, I loved her artist selection that Ann Cat Dub did last year. So that might be influencing me some. Faves are going to be Jaw Wobbles, Invaders of the Heart. Now, of course, the Lorso Reardon was on there, so that might have uh, influenced me, but uh, The Sun Does Rise, I enjoyed that a lot too. So let me know what your favorites are below. Thank you to Ancat Dub once again for curating this list. Give this a thumbs up if you haven't already and hit the subscribe button if you would. Much appreciated. Until next time, guys, I will see you.